All right, let's pray. Let's pray, Jeremiah. Right. Hands together. Hands together like this. Like this. Hands together. You want to put your hands together? Like this. Yeah, that's right. Okay, close your eyes. All right, thank you, uh, God, for bringing us here. I pray, Lord, that we can learn from Solomon's good example and learn from his bad example. So we just pray, Lord, that you would bless uh, this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, remember to sit quietly. Pay attention. When the bishop's talking, you pay attention. And if you want to ask a question, you want to say something, put your hand up. That's right. Hey, girls, come and join us. Just getting into the story now. So we are looking at book 11. See, this is why I got confused, Simon. It's book 11 is... Oh, this is actually 11 and 12, right? I should have had 11 and 12 there. First and second Kings. So we're going to join all these together. And book number 15, Second Chronicles. So we're going to be talking about the king of King Solomon. But there were many kings throughout the nation of Israel and Judah. We're not going to look at all of them. So the last king we're going to look at is King Solomon. And then you have many different stories about different kings, good kings, bad kings where you can find some good examples and bad examples to follow. So just like with Solomon, there were good examples and bad examples as well. So who was King Solomon? Does anybody know? King Solomon, do you know Abel? <laughs> King Solomon was King David's son. So remember we looked at King Saul, and then Saul, what did he do wrong? He disobeyed, so the kingdom was given to King David. And then King David, he wanted to build a house for God. You remember he committed a great sin where he uh, committed adultery with somebody else's wife and had the husband killed. But, you know, he repented of that and God forgave him and still used him. So he wanted to build a house for God, but he wasn't allowed to. So he got Solomon to build the temple that he wanted to build uh, that God did not allow him to build. So... We're looking at that today. We're looking at King Solomon, the story. So he became king. So his, an early story in King Solomon's life is he was having a nap and then God comes to him in a dream. So this is just a picture. I don't know if this is what Solomon actually looked like, but he was sleeping and then God comes to him in a dream. And you know what God says to him? He says... Basically, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. He says, you ask me whatever you want, and, and that's yours. Can you imagine if God said that to you, what would you ask for? You know, maybe you'd ask for all the candy in the world. Or maybe you want unlimited hours on the iPad, right? So maybe there are different things that you'd want. Imagine if you could ask for anything you want. What would you ask for? What do you think, Theone, Zephy? Can you think of something that you would ask? What would you ask for, Simon, if you could ask for anything? Lego. 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 Yeah, lots of Lego, hey? Well, there's a lot of things you could ask for. You know what Solomon asked for when God asked him, hey, what, what would you like and I'll give it to you? You know what he asked for? He asked for wisdom. You know, because he was a king, he was ruling over God's people. What's wisdom? Wisdom is when you're very smart. Right? He asked for wisdom because he said, if I have wisdom, then I, have, I can judge righteously the people of God. You know, and God was so pleased with what he asked for. You know, God says, you didn't ask for long life. You didn't ask for the life of your enemies. Right? You didn't ask that you, you wanted me to kill somebody else for you or something like that. You didn't ask for riches and power. You, because you asked for wisdom, God says, I'm going to give you that wisdom. But not only that, whilst you're king, there'll be no other king that is as powerful as you, that has as much riches as you. So he gave them those other things as well. So you see how he was pleased with what Solomon asked for. So I think that's a good example for us, right? When we think about you know, what we want, do we just want power? Do we just want popularity amongst our friends? Do we just want a lot of things like Lego? No, we want wisdom, don't we? We want to be smart. 
so we don't grow up silly. You know? So that's what Solomon asked for, and God was happy with that. God was so happy that he asked for wisdom instead of riches and things. Now, this is where, this is the verse we're going to look at today. So this is where Solomon actually asked for wisdom and understanding. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9, look at what he says here. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. Guys, can you just, guys, can you guys just keep it down a bit? Because you, you, you can hear it in here. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. So you see, that's what it means to be wise. It means you know the difference between doing something good and doing something bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? You see how he asked for an understanding heart? And that's what God was pleased with. So let's read it together. You ready? 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. Great. Now this is the one of the early stories of Solomon where he actually showed everybody this wisdom that he had. And what's happening here? There were two ladies. Now these were two, you know, naughty ladies, right? They were two prostitutes. So they, they sold themselves, you know, sold their body for money to men. But they came because what happened was they each had a baby. But one of these women in the night, when she was sleeping with her baby, she rolled over and she accidentally killed her baby. So what she did is she went to this other woman and she swapped the baby out, right? So she swapped her dead baby for that woman's alive baby. And in the morning, the woman who had the baby that was living said, well, this is not my baby. You know, why, why have I got this dead baby with me? So they were disputing over who was the true mother of this baby, right? So they didn't know. So one, they were both claiming, hey, that's my real baby. So what happened? They went to Solomon to ask, to judge. Solomon had to judge who was the true mother of this baby because both of them were claiming to be the true mother. So this is where Solomon displayed the wisdom that God gave him. And what did Solomon do when these two ladies came to him, both claiming to be the true mother of the baby? He said, get a sword. And you know what? We're just going to cut the baby in half. And each mother can have half. You think that's a good idea? Yeah. And why did he say it? Now, if this was your baby, and somebody said to cut it in half, what do you think you would do? Wouldn't you say, no, don't cut it in half. Let the baby live. Right? Well, that's what happened. So when Solomon's saying, you know what, let's cut the baby in half, and both of them can have half each, one of the ladies said, do it, cut the baby in half. But the other lady said, no, no, if you're going to cut the baby in half, let the other lady have the baby, because I'd rather have the baby live. So this is how Solomon knew, ah, this is the real mother, because the real mother would not want her child to die. So she would rather give her child away than let the child die. So Solomon said, give the baby to this woman, because she is the true mother. Right? And then everyone realized, well, Solomon had such wisdom. They thought he was saying something crazy, right, to cut the baby in half. But he did it to try and find out which woman was the true mother. And from their reaction, he knew that this lady was the true mother. So that was one of the good stories from Solomon where he showed how wise he was to be able to judge the people of God. Now Solomon went on to do lots of great works for God, you know, because he was so wise... You know, he, he made the nation of Israel so prosperous and he was responsible for building the temple. 
If you remember in Leviticus, we learned about the tabernacle. Remember we did the animal sacrifices? So Solomon was following the plans of David to build the temple. So in, rather than God being worshipped in a tent, he built the big temple for God. He did a huge sacrifice to God, a huge burnt offering. And when he dedicated the temple, he prayed to God. This was one of the great works of Solomon. But... Solomon wasn't perfect, was he? He did good things for God, but it didn't, didn't always end well for him. Because he was so wise, he had a queen from another nation come and visit him, ask him a lot of questions. That was a really one part of his story as well, that you know, other nations would come to him and desire to have the wisdom like him. And you can see he was so prosperous. All the gold in Israel... You know, all his servants are happy. So he did a lot of good things, but he also did a lot of naughty things. So Solomon was not perfect. One thing that he was known for that he did was he just indulged in pleasure. And he had a lot of wives. How many wives are you meant to have? Just one. Do you know how many wives, do you know how many wives Solomon had? 300 plus 700 concubines so co a concubine is when you have a servant that you marry so in total he had 1000 wives so you're only allowed one how many did he have 1000 and you know these ladies they turned Solomon's heart away from God and Solomon started worshipping idols and he built up temples to other idols. And that's where he's, he didn't end well. But we hear about some of his thoughts in the Bible when he reflected on it. And he realised all these pleasures that he had, women, fame, power, money, was all vanity. It was all vain. So we can learn from Solomon's example. We want to ask for wisdom. We want to learn from his bad example. We don't want to follow after the pleasures of this world. Am I right? We need, to, we need to realize that the pleasures of this world are vain. And we need to fear God and keep his commandments. So even though Solomon is known as the son of David and he's a shadow of Jesus Christ, he's not perfect. But you know who's perfect? Jesus. Jesus is the true son of David, the seed that was to come to build the true house. But he didn't have any sin at all. Jesus is perfect. We can follow his example perfectly. But when we look at a, the example of some of the kings like Solomon, we have to see the difference between good and bad, don't we? We have to make sure we don't follow the bad example. Make sure we follow the good example. All right, we've got a craft activity today. So today we're going to be, because we're talking about the kings, we did King Solomon, today everyone's going to make a crown. So we're going to have, all have a crown, we're going to make one, we've got some things at the back there. So let's stand up, we're going to go to the back, and we're going to make a crown to remind us of the kings. All right?